you may recall last week there were some people who didn't like the idea that uh, the gender options were not diverse enough uh, in the census, apparently, male, female, other, offensive to some. Well, we learned today that the chief statistician, the person, of course, working with the ABS, putting together the way that the census data will be uh, interpreted and further questions will be put forward in four years' time, had this to say about the concept of gender. We are talking about a, 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 a pretty small proportion of the population, but um, in, in the statement that I read out about chromosomes, hormones and reproductive mm -hmm. organs, um, in principle people, uh, uh, people can under, undergo hormonal changes um, which would be relevant to their sex. Claire Chandler is a senator from Victoria as part of the government, and she joins us now. Claire, uh, the statistician seems to suggest that, uh, well, this was a highly relevant matter, but of course it's only 1,200 people who in the last census in 2016 uh, identified themselves as being non-binary or non-traditional when it comes to their sexes. Now, presumably, uh, for a whole bunch of reasons, let's imagine that number has doubled, trebled or even 10 times. We're hardly talking about millions of people. But why do you find uh, what he said to be uh, an insight into how they're going to be crunching numbers into the future? Well, I think the most troubling insight in terms of what the Chief Statistician uh, said in that clip that you played before, Paul, is that he's actually referring to the apparent idea that somebody can change their sex over their lifetime, that human beings change sex over their lifetime. I mean, when he's talking about chromosomes and hormones and all of those sorts of things, that is what he's referring to. And that is just an utter nonsense. I mean, I don't think there are any Australians out there who actually think that people can change their sex over their lifetime. Um, gender identity, of course, we're living in a brave new world where apparently uh, people can, can have different gender identities, but sex cannot change. And it's really troubling that our national statistician, the Australian Bureau of Statistics, is saying that it can because it fundamentally undermines the accuracy and the effectiveness of the data that they are collecting if they're saying that these variables can change over time. We use this information that the ABS collects about sex to determine where to offer uh, women's shelters where only women are accessing those services or uh, where to offer uh, treatments for testicular cancer. All of these sorts of policy decisions are based on having accurate data and if the ABS is saying that people can change their sex over their lifetime, then that data is just not going to be accurate. But in the concept of, of gender fluidity, there, there, there are people amongst us who will say, um, through gender dysmorphia, whichever way you, you want to call it, that their body isn't the one that they wish to live in that matches their sex. Now, again, it's not, it's not millions of people. It's maybe thousands of people at this stage, right? Um, but obviously... Shouldn't shouldn't the census reflect how they identify? Um, we have that for in, for Indigenous people. You don't have to have a piece of paper to declare that. Then shouldn't that be the same for gender? And I'm not embracing all the other radical stuff. I'm just talking about how you actually consider yourself if you've gone through all of the different processes to flip from one to the other. Well, I think regardless of whether you think gender should be uh, or gender identity, let's say, should be mm. a question um, that's on the census, we have to remember that we still need to have that sex question there. We still need to know at any one time how many biological males and biological females exist in Australia for the reasons that I just outlined. It's that information that informs us to create better public policy. And, I mean, more broadly than that, of course, we know that this whole um, the conflating of, of sex and gender is one of the key reasons why we are seeing the sex-based rights of women, their access to services and spaces and facilities that they quite rightly have access to is being eroded. So, I mean, that, that's yet another reason why I think this is pretty disappointing from the ABS. Fair point. Good to hear and good to hear the questioning as well. All the best to you, Senator.